Now that we have a uh, scale created, we can actually use that scale to uh, run a t-test. We can see is there a difference in some uh, with a t-test, of course, you need to have an independent variable that is either nominal or ordinal. Nominal is probably easiest because t-tests, you have two two categories. And we'll, we'll do that, and we'll, we'll look at gender and our ab scale. But before we do anything, one of the things I would like to look at would be exactly what does the ab scale show you? What exactly is the ab scale? And we'll go to our frequencies and just take a quick look at what our frequencies output looks like. Uh, one of the things to remember is that the ab any scale or the two components of the ab any scale are measured as yes and no. And yes is one. So here what you have is uh, abortion if woman wants for any reason. Yes would be 276. Uh, you get an, it's okay for a woman to get an abortion if the pregnancy was the result of rape. Yes. So that means if they answered yes on both of those, they would have a two. And what a two means is that the two then would be the more pro-choice position. A person who says no uh, would say two, so no would be two, no would be two. A person who says four would be the most extreme pro-life position in, in our case here. So just taking a look at that information. So why don't we just, uh, we don't really need that output anymore, so we'll get rid of it. And now we'll do our t-test. And a, a t-test is, is, again, a fairly simple procedure. We're going to compare means. And because our samples are independent, we're going to use the independent samples t-test. Our test variable, which is our dependent variable, will be our scale. And our scale is called the ab scale. Then we need to have some sort of grouping variable. And since we're going to look at gender, that would be gender. Uh, and what we need to do is figure out where gender is. Of course, in this case, gender is called sex. You define groups. Group 1 is 1, and group 2 is 2. Now, I'm not entirely sure, but if I recall correctly, group 1 is male, and group 2 is female. So we click on Continue. We've done the process here. One thing we would do for our options is uh, just to make sure that everything prints out OK. Uh, we're going to click on OK. And this will give us our output. It's a little to think about it. And what we have is really two output blocks. This first one is called Group Statistics. And what our output shows us here is that there are 266 males who per answered questions related to the abortion opinion scale. Our mean score is 2.71. Remember, it roughly goes from 2 to 4. Females are uh, 341. There are 341 females, and it goes to 200. And the mean score on on our scale is 279. And what we want to look at here is we're we're not really as concerned about this first set of columns. Uh, if we have equality of variances, we're not so concerned about that. We want to look at equality of means. We're testing to see are the means the same. And what we want to look at is first of all our t-test, which we can go back and take a look. And what this shows is that the men are a little bit less than the women, the female respondents. Degrees of freedom is 6.05, and we got a SIG two-tailed test. What this is actually telling us is what is the the possibility, the probability that, or the proportion that we will get a uh, that this happened by chance. And what we're looking for here, our cutoff point or our magic number is. 0.05. Remember, we always set everything at the 0.05 significance level. This is well above 0.05. This is 0.19. So we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. If we don't reject the null hypothesis, we fail to reject the null hypothesis, we basically say that here, this mean is not significantly different. Thank you.